And good afternoon, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. Now, the market did initially during Globex continue to decline, and that was our expectations coming in today, uh, but the, reached a level that could have completed, if we're counting this the way we were, that this is a third wave down, you know, one, two, three, three of C, and this is four of C. Uh, it, that could have completed, and we got a nice, which looks like it might be, I'll just take this down to the 15 minute, we can take it a little bit cleaner on the inside, See, it's starting to get real sloppy in here. So this could be uh, A, A, B, C, B, and then we're getting a C wave to complete this fourth wave, but it's a little bit too big. And although it's not really broken any rules and it's kind of come into the fourth of one lesser degree, uh, I, I'm not real pleased with it. And as it balances out against the other uh, markets, it uh, certainly, may not be a fourth wave, but here's what it can be. So if I need to move the, right now we're considering the, that wave B of intermediate wave four completed at this high. If that's not the case, we may move it over to this level and still calling wave B of intermediate wave four complete. But what that changes, instead of this being a third wave, it's the first wave. Now, I'm going to remove because just for a moment, I'm going to take off our extensions. And let's just go with for a moment to look at what a wave four could really come up to, or excuse me, a wave two. Oh, doing too many charts today, folks. So if we just kind of go here, if this was a wave two, wave twos normally will do 50% and they actually can do 0.618%. So the wave two could come up to 4,117, 118. That happens to coincide with the two, uh, 50 day moving average right now, or it could come up to 4,132 to 35 and consider complete there. Again, the interior of this is very sloppy. The trade was really sloppy today with this push, pushing and pulling and pulling and pushing. And it didn't make trading very easy, but nonetheless, the end of the day, we tried to take a look at it and figure out what are you trying to tell us, Mark? So again, uh, I'm going to leave the B here for right now. Although I'm not really as pleased as I would be with this particular wave, it did seem very corrective in nature because of the internals of it, very sloppy. But I'm gonna more than likely consider the, the wave B complete at this high, and that we are still dropping in a C wave, but instead of a four, it's one, and this is wave two. That leaves a very strong third wave yet to come. And that fits the overall picture because what brought in today's buying, I have no idea, but they really just kind of came in and they were relentless and basically weren't going to stop. Um, and, you know, we had, we had some selling points, obviously. We had a down bar here. And I believe that, yes, at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Pacific. And then they just brought it up into the close. And then it sold off a little bit, just a little bit, into, uh, in, right after the close. Now, so for tomorrow, I think if we're going to continue to go up in a wave two of C, then we got support, uh, resistance at 4,117, 118. We'll go all the way up to 120. And then we have additional resistance above at 4,132. We can go up to 35. But either way, if we get to the 50% retracement and it fails, and starts to move down, then we're going to be looking for it to break below the 0.382. So that's 4,103. We're going to look for it to break pretty quickly below 4,100. And then begin to head down. And that's going to give us more strength that indeed that corrective wave or that corrective bounce is complete. And now we're beginning into the larger corrective decline again. And so, but if the market continues to go up, 
And say so we have another intense day tomorrow where the market goes up 40 or 50, uh, the S&P goes up 40 or 50 bucks from here, we're looking up into here. And that's going to again bring about that this is wave A, this is wave B, and this is all of the internal B wave. And then we're getting a C wave rally, which could take us back up into these levels. And I will, let's get rid of that one. Let's once again, put on our um, extensions and let's just take a peek at what this um, wave can look like going back up. So what we would do, we're gonna compare it to this, this would be A, this wave would be A, and we're gonna compare it to that. And so I'm going to, come on. This thing just drives me nuts and it gets so fussy. This one, thank you. And we're gonna to go to the top of that A and we're gonna come all the way back down to here. And now we can see. So most common relationship between a C wave and an A wave would be that it's equal to 100%. So wave C would be 100% the length of wave A at 4,204.50. That would be a very logical area for this market to go to and to complete if indeed this is a C wave going up. What's going to give it support if it starts to, it already has broken above 4,112, trading below it, but it did break above it. We have 4,129, 4,150, we'll call it. All these, these are going to be resistance levels on the way up. Once it gets above 4,179, 4,180, now we're getting into completion zone. So again, what's going to be more important is the structure. We need to see five waves forming to the upside, five waves. And once those five waves are in, then we're gonna be start to look for a completion point. Now this right now is my alternate view. But if indeed the S&P is going to react and move along with the NASDAQ or vice versa, they could help each other by just blasting higher. And that would not be totally unexpected. The, from the buying and the intensity we had today, it would literally have to evaporate and the, and the sellers move back in because of geopolitical concerns, uh, a, a whole myriad of things that could really go on that would drive the sellers to come back in. So now we have a, a look up and a look down. And if we're getting that move up, those are the expectations, folks. And it may take balance of the week to get there. Who knows? We'll let the market tell us. The outside is, is that this indeed is just uh, wave one, wave two, and we're gonna start a stronger decline. And in that being the case, we've also have our, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Fibonacci's, and we're gonna run those because we're looking at then for this particular C wave to be related to the A wave, which is the big move I've just measured out. And we'll take it from there. And in that case, we have some much bigger fish to fry, so to speak, because that's the first level where I would think that it could come to. That is where wave this, if indeed it's a wave C going down, which eventually folks, no matter which count comes through, if the upside comes through, I'm still looking for a C wave. As soon as that B wave is complete, I'm looking for a C wave down. If it's starting now, fine. But in, in any case, I'm looking for a move below there. Again, below that 4,040. And so 3,970.25 is where that C wave would be equal to this A wave. And that's the relationship. Now on the way up, if it's still trying to finish an internal B wave, then that C wave would be related to this move. And that's why we did the Fibonacci retracements, excuse me, Fibonacci extensions differently, okay? Depends on which C wave you're comparing to which move. This is the smaller C wave would be compared to this and the larger C wave we're looking for to complete this and the larger intermediate fourth wave is compared to that A wave down. 
That's where I'm going to leave it right now. Continue to trade what's in front of you, please. Also remember to continue to use your moving averages as guides to entry and exits. And also keep in mind your Fibonacci numbers. And if you're redrawing them, keep them in mind and your relationships and what the market is telling. Next update will be Thursday, the 20th.